What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out Jim Cornette reviews Roman Reigns' return and Cody Rose versus Solo Sokoa at SummerSlam. I was waiting for him to drop this video to get his thoughts on the OTC returning back to SummerSlam. So uh, we're gonna check out what happened or uh, what he had to say. We're gonna get right into this one. Let's ch see what Jim Cornette had to say about this, man. Now time, ladies and gentlemen, for the last match of the evening. For the WWE Undisputed, well, it's actually disputed by the guy that has the other title, but for the yeah. WWE title, <laughs> the yeah. big one, Cody Rhodes and Solo Sokoa, the new tribal chief, and they gave the big the big entrance to Solo, but then they went back in the back and, and they went all the way to Cody's bus. The camera's mm -hmm. on the bus and watch him get off the bus and tip the bus driver or whatever. He handed the <laughs> leash of his dog, Pharaoh. Who wasn't allowed on the bus. Apparently not, because he was already standing out there waiting for him. Uh, but and, and it was not, he kissed Pharaoh on the head. See, I love a man who loves his dog. Of course, of course. And he's walking Pharaoh through. Now, he, the only thing is he didn't come out <laughs> with Pharaoh out in the building. So why was he walking Pharaoh toward Couldn't he have just left Pharaoh to watch the monitor like the rest of the family? What? <laughs> but anyway, here's the, 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 the story of the entrance is as he's walking through the back leading the dog, he looks over to the left and he sees Arn Anderson. Mm -hmm. And he's, what? You mean to tell me that's when Cody first realized that one of his oldest friends was in the building? Just hanging out, just there leisurely in a polo shirt. He was surprised <laughs> he wasn't in catering. <laughs> well, he looked like he had been there. Oh, my gosh. And Arn gave him a pep talk that was not well mic'd, and Arn doesn't have the, the, the projection that he used to have in his voice. and. He told Cody that he still has friends. They're on the way. You can do the, that type of thing. It was a pep talk. It, mm -hmm. I understand it. It was, it, it, again, another sign of the, the new administration, the new ownership that Arn was there to begin with. And he is an important figure in Cody's life and background. And he has been talked about. But this wasn't a stirring go out there and win one for the Gipper type of speech that you would have thought maybe in that environment. Should they have done that on the bus where it was a little more intimate, you could hear better? It may have been something for like the moment before Cody leaves the bus, he gets to hear some words from Arn, but mm -hmm. you know, Arn's not really a big rah-rah guy. You're not going to get that from him. <laughs> so well, it's I'm, not like he's going to stand there like Jimmy Hart and you know, jump in the background and yell, go get Go. Well, I mean, no, but uh, but I but mean, maybe a, you need that. Maybe you need motivation, a stirring motivational speech like the enforcer in the day would have given. It would it, it but the people popped when they saw him on the on the screen. Mm -hmm. Yep, I ran out too. of time though. Part two of the speech was, "Why did you bring your dog if you're going to have to just give him to this other guy in a minute?" Oh my! Gosh. Yeah, well, it, and Pharaoh's being passed around for heaven's sake, like like an unwanted dog at the pound. Over and over before this bit. Anyway, and then they said it was his last trip on the road. What are they retiring the dog? The dog has decided to retire. I didn't hear the explanation for why the announcer said it was his last trip with Cody. They couldn't come to terms on a new contract with Pharaoh. Are they putting Pharaoh down? Yeah, really. Why'd they say that? Oh, come that? on. No, he hey, looked yo. in the, in the, what the, hell does the that mean? of life. Well, what the hell did they say that for then? Anyway, he wasn't going to take a trip with him on the road anymore. Maybe Brandy's I didn't even hear that. foot down to Pharaoh's too old for this shit. Oh, so it's like a last hurrah. A, a big, a, a final farewell to Pharaoh. Anyhow, he, uh, Cody got a big <laughs> entrance. He's over. The bloodline rules. The WWE title. Cody solo. Here we go. Yep, here we go. And this wasn't so much of a match as a an Eddie Graham finish on steroids put on a loop. <laughs> what? Every, I mean, they sat down and worked on this one. It was a giant uh, uh, performance piece where they had to make it bloodline rules, basically uh -huh. no rules, so that everybody could... Because they gave the people every kind of twist and turn and 
up and down and run in and whatever that they could. Mm -hmm. But there would have been no way to figure out how to do this in a regular match. They had to do what they did. Yeah. And before the run-in started happening, I just had observations. One, uh, Solo is the younger brother of both the Usos, right? Mm -hmm. Solo so. is the younger brother of the Usos, correct? Yes. He's the best worker of the bunch of them. Oh, by far. He's by solid. Far. He lays his stuff in. There aren't, the, there aren't as many of the holes that you point out with Jey Uso, especially with Jimmy Uso, too. You don't see that with Solo. He's not as awkward with the kicks and the movements. It's You're not distracted because he's wearing tennis shoes and baggy shit. He's not oh, open-handed oh slapping God. people. <laughs> and he does different stuff. And before I've mentioned that I, I thought Solo was sometimes limited in what he was doing, but Cody obviously was the, the captain here. Mm -hmm. And either brought out more in him or he's trying to expand his repertoire. But he, and that bit, the Samoan drop that he does is more like a Samoan release suplex. Where instead of coming flat down on the guy like Jacob does, he's fucking boosting him and throwing him. But it just, his, his in ring is coming along and I think his confidence is coming along. And this I, I do I, believe. And I'm glad they're giving. I'm glad they're giving Solo some love here. I know a lot of people make the comment, "Oh, he's oralist," but I do think he has improved. I do feel like he's more comfortable on the microphone. He's enjoying this role. What's really going to be good is his interaction with Roman. This is what we need. They're going to have this back and forth. Solo's now talking and speaking for himself, and that's going to help. It's going to help. So I love what they're doing with Solo. I know people say he's oralist. I wouldn't say that to an extent. I do feel like there's still some things that he can improve on, but I think he's getting better. He's definitely found his place. He's found his lane in in what they're doing right now, and he's getting a good reaction. Fans hate him, and that's what you want. Not go away heat either. So I, I, think, I think they're doing good with Solo. I think he did more different stuff here than any match I've seen of him or the Usos maybe put together. He's doing some good stuff. But finally, you know, to start the run-ins, Cody hit a big superplex and both sold it. And they went into a yay-boo exchange. And then Cody fired up and hit the crossroads. And right then, mm -hmm. here comes Tama Tonga and Tongaloa. Yep. And you know what I'm about to say. It's gotten to be... I love it. He's so, my favorite. Do, do look before you insult him or say here anything. Here we go. Here all right. We, go. we knew Tongaloa. it was coming. <laughs> when he came out there, I'm thinking, all oh, right, there's been all these past incidents oh, that my. seem ridiculous, but when you put them all together, it's quite the picture. Oh, now man. he has an eye patch. <laughs> all I'm thinking is, wouldn't it be funny if like he just doesn't go the right way because if of the it, eye patch? If it threw off his depth perception. <laughs> oh, it definitely did. It definitely <laughs> <Because> did. <laughs> we're we're talking about a guy with two eyes that missed a stationary nut shot <laughs> <laughs> that whiffed a guy hitting a guy in the balls and the guy wasn't moving. <laughs> um, and so in this one, he comes in and they hold Cody the other, and he's going to try to run and spear Cody backwards kind of into the turnbuckles. And he missed. And he ran into Cody and drove him. <laughs> the wrong way he missed the corner of the ring and he just oh drove God. him into the ropes and you could see cody looking back like where am i fucking going <laughs> and then he had to shove him back in the fucking corner so that tama tonga could run and do whatever he was good at but he missed the fucking turnbuckles in the corner of the ring it's cody become was a going backwards and he knew he was him. going the wrong way <laughs> And it just, that's the first thing you see, the first thing he does. It's, I'm sitting here waiting for it and watching for it, and that he does it right in front of you. It's almost like you don't believe it. If, you know, how did he? I've never seen anyone miss the turnbuckle. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen anyone miss the turnbuckle. He missed the corner. How do you miss well, the yeah, corner? Well, yeah, it wasn't even there. There was three turnbuckles to choose from. He missed all of them by five feet to the right. <laughs> <laughs> so then... <laughs> but then the Tongas beat up Cody and Solo covers him, but he gets two count. Mm -hmm. So the Tongas get back on Cody, but then Owens music plays mm -hmm. and Kevin Owens comes in and gets a big fight. 
And then, but they get Owens down because they're the numbers advantage. Mm -hmm. And then Orton music plays. Mm -hmm. And when Orton comes down to make this big save, did you see him coming down, slapping fans' hands on either side yeah. of the entranceway? <laughs> yeah. Also, both guys were in their gear. Do you think it would have had more impact if they ran out there in street clothes? They weren't working. Well, if with, with Owens, anything that you can do to cover up his body, I'm in favor <laughs> of. But I've mentioned before, Orton never goes out there. He wants to look like a star. Anytime he goes out in front of people, he's always dressed in gear. Uh, but <laughs> if I would have been wondering if they were my friends, where they were fucking hiding for the you know two mm -hmm. minutes that these guys were beating the shit out of me before they decided to play their music and come out and help. Well, Arn said they and, were and, on hey, the way. Well, goddamn, would they come in separate cars? Because one got there before the other one did. Well, they had to wait for their music to get queued up. Well, no, one guy had to shake some hands on the way down because yeah. he's running for office. The only thing better than that was when Jeff Hardy made his AEW debut to save Matt Hardy, and he stopped yeah. the dance. He stopped, he stopped the, the dance. dance. That was funny, bro. That was funny. Just, dude, brother but getting anyway, packed up, he's dancing. The, the fans' hands, Orton got in and cleared the ring and power slammed Solo. And then o Owens went to the top and Swanton solo. And then Cody Crossroads is zid zid did did <laughs> solo and got a two count. And it was a weak kick out. And I don't know what it, the fans went eh, because it looked like this guy, big move, this guy, big move. Then the champion, big finish, yeah. boom. He either, it was a weak kick out and the people didn't see it and there wasn't a lot of reaction. He either needed to kick out strong or maybe they didn't need to do that there. But at that point, Orton's and Orton's and Owens, the, the team of Orton's and Owens <laughs> chased the Tongans out of the building. They fought off, Brian. See, that was Harley's allergy cough. She's much better now. Well, they fought out. Not fought off. Well, they fought off. They fought out. They fought off. They went off. They went away. <laughs> off off with you. Off with their heads. So then Cody throws the stairs in the ring, and he hits Solo with him once, and he hits him twice. And he goes, but now he's just hit this guy with the stairs twice, and he goes for the big third one, and Solo comes with a spear, spears him out from under the stairs, two count. Mm-hmm. Great facials on both, by the way, when they're selling. It just sometimes... You would think maybe one shot with the stairs may have worked. Uh, Solo missed the running ass in the corner on the stairs when Cody moved. And then Cody hit the crossroads twice, and he was going for the Prepare third time. But Jacob fought But two. you know who's been unaccounted for? Jacob oh, fought The two. werewolf. Was that the werewolf? It sounded like Lassie. Oh, it, it's the werewolf. <laughs> is, is the werewolf, Wolfman Jack. Is that Wolfman Jack? Yeah, what are you doing? That's who it is. That's what Jacob Fatu sounds like. He sounds like Wolfman <laughs> Jack. Playing mounds of sand. You got the money, honey. I got the time. What? <laughs> and Fatu levels Cody Rhodes and hits the springing moonsault and puts Solo on top of Cody. Two count. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. So then Solo says to Fatu, put him through the table. And Cody, or Cody puts, uh, Fatu puts Cody on the announce desk, clears it off. The Who puts their desk back together? I saw the desk cleared off at least three times, right? <laughs> and then the next time somebody goes to do it, all the monitors are back, the notes, the fucking, the wiring, everything's right there. They sweep it all off again. Do they have a desk reassembler -er -er -er? Oh, ro -ro 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 -ro. over to the side? Ro -ro 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 -ro. Do you think each announcer has to fend for themselves? You grab a leg and I grab a leg? No, they have to have someone there. You grab a leg and I grab a leg, honey. You grab a leg and I grab a leg. So he cleared off the, te the desk of the thing, and he goes to the top rope, and he splashes Cody through the table. Crazy but spot. But instantly... Jacob Fatu grabs his left leg. I believe it was his left leg. And he, oh, and he's screaming, and he's, he did an incredible job of selling it. It looks like he's either had a leg broken or broken. Yeah, he sold it, because I thought he was legit hurt. But then when you really think about it, it makes sense, because that's how you would get him out of it. That's how you would get him out of that sp from, you know, being involved in the rest of the match. He sold that shit. 
He sold it like a million fucking bucks. I, bruh, he sold that shit. Cause I legit thought he was hurt. And even, there's still part of me think he may, be, you know, may have been a little bit hurt. Cause when you watch the replay, his leg does hit the edge of that table. So I don't know how much was that acting and how much of that was real. But if, if that was legitimately just some good, good acting, good selling, boy, he sold that. Broken somebody's leg before. He sold it. Because he did a fantastic fucking sell job. He sold it. Many that. people were convinced that he was goddamn fucked up. I, I thought he was. Well, apparently he was seen around today in a walking boot. And that, and I'm proud of him for that, too. Yeah, to sell That's it. That's the modern-day equivalent of the neck brace. Yeah, to sell it. Because, it, well, I, and, you know, maybe we're going to find out that he broke a bone or two. But what I'm saying is there was a need... Because of what was going to happen next for Jacob Fatu to be rendered useless in, oh. in, 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 Immobilized. in compass mentis <laughs> rendered irrelevant there. They yeah. couldn't with the push they're giving him and the bill they're giving him, they couldn't have somebody else take him out. That would destroy his aura of mm -hmm. danger and potential invincibility, but they couldn't have him up and about for what was about to go on and what is the perfect compromise he hurts himself in mm -hmm. the act of hurting someone else mm -hmm. and Which then he can't get back in and interfere in what's going to go on keeps him so strong. i say bravo Good shit. chef's kiss to that fucking leg cell he, he did it and then when they roll cody back in the ring Solo fucking uh, splashes him off the top rope and gets a two count. Cody mm -hmm. is goddamn indestructible, but at least he's not 132 pounds like Darby Allen. <laughs> and then Cody foils the spike that Solo tries and kicks him and hits a cutter on him. Mm -hmm. And both of them are down. And you think, well, what in the world else can happen? And suddenly his music hits the opening drum beats of Roman Reigns' music hits. And the fans in that fucking stadium go absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> batshit insane. They lose their shit. We lose our, we lost and our I'm shit saying, on the stream. It's like they just saw their mother return from a fucking <laughs> lunar fucking landing that didn't go well. <laughs> Holy shit, did you hear that fucking pop yes. erupt when they all knew instantly what that fucking drum roll meant? Great pop, bro. Yeah, no, it was a major pop, and, uh, you know, people were hoping for it, and they finally got what they were hoping for. Oh, well, they've been chanting? This, this is what, this is what WWE, Vince McMahon, management, they always wanted Roman to get this moment, and he got it. He got it. And now... He is arguably the top baby face in the company. This is what they always wanted. And now they have it. It took time to get there. But the heel turn was necessary because we knew the face turn was going to be legendary. A necessary end to a legendary begin. That sounds kind of fire. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> For we want Roman. And uh, since the way that he left at WrestleMania, let's say April, May, June, July, so he's been gone for four months. Four months. The right. time is is right. They're ready for it. Boom! They see the screen. They know it's him. And then here he comes, and he's walking to the ring with the game face on. Whew. And he fucking slides in, and even the announcer go like, "Yeah, but you know who's he? Because mm -hmm. he's got the history with Cody." Mm -hmm. And he's obviously not going to be happy with Solo and the way he's been running his pie hole around the place. And he settles things instantly. There wasn't a big milk, which I was glad of because yeah. it was there. He Superman punches Solo and hits Solo with a fucking spear. Boom. And gets a big pop. Huge pop. And then looks at Cody and steps out of the ring. Yep. And starts walking to the back. And Cody grabs Solo and hits the crossroads. Boom. One, two, one, two three. three. And then 
Roman looks back over his shoulder at Cody, and Cody's looking at Roman. Oh, so good. And one of them was looking back to see if you were looking back to see if I was looking back to see, see. if you were looking back at me. <laughs> but boy, and that's why Jacob Ooh. Fatu, you still don't know what will happen physically when Jacob Fatu and Roman Reigns get mixed in with each other. Ooh, that's going to be fun. And Jacob Fatu had a good reason for mm. not getting in the way of Roman Reigns doing what he did to Solo and Cody winning the match. He was taken out of the equation. So everything fell right into place perfectly, but we still didn't answer questions that it was too early to answer. What can Solo and Roman do to each other? And et cetera, et cetera. Do you think Heyman should have come out with uh, Roman in a wheelchair? He could have just, just pointed them, him, he did it. <laughs> well, now, see, this is perfect because why Roman is in no danger right now. Roman was in control of the situation. If Heyman had showed up, all you've still got another great return. Mm -hmm. If Roman can be put in a place of jeopardy, that not that Heyman can come and physically you know, rec uh, rescue him from, but that Heyman can do a wise man thing mm -hmm. and put him, maybe the wise man thing is the wise man is the one that puts Roman and Cody finally together as a team mm. against Solo and Jacob. That's crazy. I don't and know if I want to see that. I, but again, so many I don't know if I want to see that Roman teaming up with Cody. I don't know if I want to see that. At least not yet. I don't know about that. But if you're going to do that, it would make sense for Paul to be the one to facilitate that. And also, it creates that bigger dynamic when The Rock when the rock comes back. It gives him an extra reason to be pissed off at Roman. Because one, you helped Roman retain. Two, you teamed up Roman to go against our family. Oh, no, you've lost it. You can do that. So you can make it work. I don't know if I would want to see it, but if, if they can pull it off, which I do believe they can, I would be down. I would be intrigued by it. I just don't want them to be best friends because, no, they shouldn't be. They should be rivals. Simple as that. How many ways to go? And now, how many goddamn top-level baby faces do they have in that company now that Roman has... has come back in that fashion. You've got Cody Rhodes. You've got Kevin Owens. You've got Roman Reigns. You've got L.A. Knight. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Randy Orton, who at some point probably we'll, we'll turn over here. the next run of big shows in Saudi Arabia, $100 million spectaculars, will stab Cody Rhodes Rhodes in the back, back and be yep. one of the hottest heels in the company. Yep. So but they've got mega baby faces now. Mm -hmm. Rhea Ripley. It's it's insane. Damian Priest, Jay Uso. Well, that was the insanity known as SummerSlam. Yeah, they got they got some WWE's cooking, bro. They're cooking. This was a good good review of it. Uh, of course, Jim Jim Cornette, he's gonna be meticulous and nitpick at certain things. That's just the way he does it. But it seems as if he enjoyed it, and I think a lot of people did. This was what it needed to be. It wasn't gonna be no technical classic. You're there for the story. You're there for the returns. You're there for the pop. And it was enjoyable. It was. But his idea of maybe Paul Heyman being the one to facilitate some type of team up. Or going against this new version of the bloodline. I'm sure it'll probably be Solo and Jacob teaming up together. That's actually kind of intriguing. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. Would y'all be okay if there was a reason for Cody and Roman to reluctantly team up, not to be best friends, but to reluctantly team up to take out Solo and Jacob Fatu. Y'all let me know if y'all would be interested in that. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking to me. See y'all next one. Peace.